For this piece, I'm going to throw a cylinder that's a little bit narrow at the top, um, sort of a vase shape. So I'm, I've got my clay on the wheel head, going to get some uh, water on my hands and center this. I'm going to cone this piece up to center it. Remember, I'm not going to bring my hands above the top of the, the clay there. I've got my body balanced over the clay, nice and centered. My body is, is uh, stable and my arms are braced against my legs. I'm going to use my rib to take a little bit of that clay off that's uh, stuck to the wheel head. center one more time. So I want this to be a narrow vase form and so I'm going to start it um, a little bit narrower than it might otherwise, that it would be for a bowl. I'm going to get the clay ready, drill my hole, add a little bit of water so I don't stick, and I'm going to drill nice and deep. Now this piece may be a little too narrow to use any of the ribs I've got handy to do my to flatten my floor, and so what I can do is I can use my fingertips, or I can get a, uh, a ruler or another piece of flat wood to compress that. Get my water out of my inside there. Compress my rim. Now almost right away from this point here, I'm going to start planning for this piece to be a little bit narrower at the top. So I'm going to pull the wall up in sections. I'm going to concentrate on about the bottom third here, and I'm going to ignore the clay at the top for the most part. So I'm going to lean over and pull this clay at the bottom. I'm going to come back to the bottom and pull that there. Now it's not a very sharp distinction where that bottom third is, uh, but I'm focusing on uh, thinning out just this section here. Gets a little bit thicker through here and then you can see it's real thick up here. Now the tricky thing here as well is I'm going to try not to get a lot of water on my floor because I'm not going to be able to reach into there anymore. Now I've got that bottom section thinned out to where I think I'd like it to be. Now I'm going to start to work on this next uh, sort of middle section here. Now I did a couple of pulls there and now I'm going to collar in a little bit. Collaring with clay, you've got to have some thickness at your top. You don't want to collar a piece that's gotten really thin. You want to have both hands nice and wet so they don't stick to the clay, and you can pull up uh, sort of squeezing them together. The idea is to squeeze the clay evenly all the way around, although that's not always completely possible because uh, your hands aren't completely symmetrical as you squeeze them all the way around. So now I'm going to come back here to this middle section and work my way up. I'm using a little bit more pressure on my outside hand than on my inside hand, and now I can no longer reach the inside, the bottom here without a tool of some sort. Um, I like to combine my collaring and pulling with use of a rib. The rib uh, on the outside here scrapes away some of the water that I've attached to the surface, um, compresses that clay, and so that clay down here is no longer absorbing any more water while I'm working with this top section. So I pulled a couple times, now I'm going to get my hands wet and do a couple collars, and now I'm going to start to work with this top section here. So again, not too much water, as little water as I can handle adding to the inside and still have control over it. And now I'm working with this higher section. Now I've got too much clay at the top, and that's by design. I find that when you collar, things get a little uneven, and it's always best if you can plan to cut a little bit of that clay away. I think a big problem people have when they're starting out is they work with just enough clay, and you really should be working with a little bit too much clay. Now I can cut some of that wobble off of there, and I can work with this section that I've got left here. I'm going to compress my rim a little bit um, just to keep it nice and strong. And now I can do another couple pulls. I'm using my uh, more pressure on the outside finger than on the inside finger. And every few pull, I'm sorry, every few collars you need to alternate with some pulls. As you collar this clay, you're squeezing that clay together and it's kind of wrinkling the clay that's on the inside edge. That makes it not as strong. When you, when you uh, pull, when you compress the clay with your hands or with a rib, uh, you make that clay a little bit stronger. So you're alternating be kind of between kind of weakening it as you change the shape and strengthening it, pulling up some of that clay, making it a little bit taller. You can see my rib I can use to do uh, to help control the shape of this pot as well as um, 
getting some clay off of the surface. So I'm trying it very hard to stay steady up at the top. When you get it real narrow like I've got it here, um, it's really easy to kind of catch that clay and have it twist around. Uh, so to have it catch on your finger and the whole cylinder, the whole decorative piece here, twists around. Now again, I've got more clay than I need, and so I'm going to hold my finger nice and steady while I bring that uh, wire tool in to cut it off. Now I'm going to compress this rim. It's, the rim is still pretty thick, which is what I want it to be, right until I'm done with the shaping. Now I'm going to allow this piece to just kind of flare out. So I've collared this up. I can get a little bit more height if I'd like to. And you can actually collar something so tight that it closes in, uh, makes sort of a knob and all or a closed sculptural form. All right, now hopefully I haven't dropped a lot more water in my floor because I don't really want water sitting in there and I can't get it out anymore at this point. Um, that water sitting in can cause the, the piece to crack on the bottom. I do have some control now because of the form here. I can press a little bit harder on the outside. If I use the flat edge of this rim, I can adjust the shape of the whole pot there. I can make a little bit more distinction where that corner is if I choose to. and uh, decorate it that way. I'm going to use a chamois on my rim, make sure it's nice and clean, nice and smooth. I'm pressing on the top and the bottom wall, usually that would be the inside and the outside, but here the shape is a little different, uh, to make sure it's nice and strong. Now I'm going to use my knife to undercut this. I've got actually quite a bit of clay here because of how I adjusted that shape with the rib, and so I'm not going to be shy. I'm really cutting quite a bit of that clay away. Now I've drawn, I've made that cut down into the clay following that angle of the knife, and one way to get it out of there fairly quickly is to dribble a little bit of water into that little cutout and use my needle tool to remove, or to get that, that strip of clay hydroplaning. Like that. And now that'll just slide right off of there. Now one of the neat things about what I've, exactly how I've made this piece right here today is I used rib on the outside at the very end, and so that means that with dry hands, once I wire this through, once I get the piece hydroplaning, with dry hands, I should be able to pick this up and move it without leaving any fingerprints on it. Now I'm ready to throw my next piece.